Welcome back everybody to part two of Making Money, tutorial for luck catchers. Alright, if you saw our previous video, you know that we learned how to use contracts, how to make a little bit of money per run. Now, we're going to learn how to make a lot of money per run. By the way, this only works at the lower levels. Once you pass level three into level four, the noob contracts, as we call them, disappear and things get a little bit more challenging. But challenge is a good thing, so don't be afraid. Until then, let's make some big bucks. Alright, so at our last tutorial, you saw that I was still learning pilotage. I'm going to sort of cheat here and just finish the skill for the purpose of showing you all how this works. Again, you can do this as well if you have the money. You can finish your skill early. We're going to do so for four gold. Now I have pilotage level one says that I have control up to three ships with this current level. What that means is I can control the ship I'm in plus two more ships. However, don't just go buying a ship and trying to launch it because you will find that you can only control one. There is a trick here. This is where we're going to learn to use the market. So, here we are down in the market. We're going to hit C. Here is the market. There are two tabs and this is very important. There is market for this settlement, meaning everything available in the area I am docked in, or all market. If any of the developers watch, watch this, you need to change this to all markets. It should be plural. Anyway, we're going to go to all markets and we're going to find out where we can buy an enhancer. An enhancer is something we can fit to our ship that will allow our ship to be remote controlled. We're going to go down to navigation system. Currently, there are units of one, that's this little number here, for sale in this settlement for six gold. By the way, uh, you can set it to gold, which the, these are going to go away because they're no longer using silver or copper, but this really is just another way of saying show all deals in all settlements in range, regardless of how good or bad they are this right here just indicates the best sales available sometimes it's good to do this just so you can see what's available around you and where your competition is um, so here we've got a sale of one navigation system for six gold and hey lucky day it's for sale here in this settlement awesome we're gonna buy two of these mainly because we are going actually you know what I'm going to buy an extra one. Something I learned the other day is you really should have navigation systems on all your ships, regardless of if you fly them or if you remote fly them. Um, I ran into this issue where I exited my balloon and it slowly floated away into outer space and there was no way I could retrieve it because I <laughs> didn't have a navigation system on it. So I do strongly recommend you just put these on every one of your ships. All right, anyway, we've now got three navigation systems, the way to tell is you can go to your warehouse and there they are. Next we need to fit them to balloons. But wait, we don't have more balloons, we just have one. So we need to buy some balloons. Go to ships and again I would do all markets just in case someone else has it for cheaper. We're gonna get the Sutler MK2 balloon. These automatically spawn for sale for one gold in your starter settlement so you don't need to go searching for these there it is one gold supply one in the settlement that's sort of a lie because if I buy it a new one will appear a light no engine general purpose airship yada 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 we're gonna buy one see now it says it's in hearth but then it respawns there's another one available here so we're gonna buy one more there we go now we take a little trip over to our hangar and look at that one two three balloons are now docked in our hangar let's go ahead and click on any one of the balloons here is your enhancement slot area you'll notice it's empty we need to fix that so we're going to open up our hold while the ship is selected now we see our hold is empty just as before 
but we also see these enhancers that are called navigation systems. So we're going to drag that over. And we're only going to drag one because we only need one on this balloon. Going to hit OK. There it is in our hold. Now that it's in the balloon, I'm going to click on the enhancer. And you'll notice that these have now turned to sort of a tan color, indicating that it can go in any of these slots. As far as I can tell, there's no way to manually put it in any of these, and it really doesn't matter where it goes. We're going to hit this check mark, which moves it onto the ship. Navigation system one, again, this is kind of a poor English translation, poor English translation, but it's just really asking, do I want to put this on my balloon? I'm going to say OK. There it is. Now we're going to rinse and repeat for the other two ships in our hangar, right here. Open the cargo, drop one in the hold, change the quantity to one, hit OK. It's a little bit tedious, I'm, I'm hoping they add a feature in soon enough that makes this a lot quicker. And last but not least is our balloon, the one that we started the first tutorial with. By the way, each of your balloons comes with its own unique ID. You'll notice if I go to my hangar, my docking port, and I mouse over my balloons down at the bottom right, I have an ID for each of these ships, CL92, UL92, IJ92. So they each have their own unique identifier. You can write those down if you ever, for whatever reason, want to track down a certain balloon. Like we know, for example, that my starter ship came with weapons. Oh. See, I already screwed myself up. This, hopefully, yes, this is my starter ship. And here's weapons with ammo. So this is probably the one I'm going to want to pilot at all times. The other two ships, which are new balloons, they do not come with weapons and ammo. I believe I mentioned this in my other tutorial. Okay. Um, we can load those up with uh, weapons and ammo, but that will be another tutorial. Let's not waste much more time. All right, here is the tricky part that most people tend to mess up. All right, so we know that this balloon here with the ID of IJ92 is my balloon, which means I need to unload this balloon last. Now, before I do that, I need to do what we did in step one, which is to get a bunch of cargo contracts. So I'm opening my first of three balloons going to the cargo bay. Oh, whoops, did I forget to put the navigation on? There we go. All right, I'm going to go to cargo contracts, and we're just, oop, and be very careful. You see right here, there are other contracts, and as a noob, you got to be very careful about accepting these contracts. For example, it's got a deposit of 20 and a payment of 20, meaning I have to put in 20 gold. Once I deliver it, I get my 20 gold back and I also get paid 20. These can be tricks to kill players, so make sure that you know what you're doing before you do this because just like in EVE Online, if you've ever played it, someone can make a contract to the middle of nowhere with a huge deposit and then gank you on your way and keep your money. So be very cautious. As a new player, let's just stick to the newbie contracts. You'll notice that these now pay two gold because I'm a level two player. Your level is determined by skills. Once you complete a certain number of skills, this bar fills up, you get the next level. After level three, we can no longer do these simple contracts. Okay, so back into my balloon, opening up cargo, opening up contracts. This is gonna take a minute because I'm gonna fill all three balloon. That is 16 gold times three, which is 30, 40, I don't know, somewhere around 50. It's a lot of gold. I don't feel like counting. Here we go. By the way, unfortunately, um, it does not move into your balloon once you have multiple balloons in the hangar, so you'll have to manually move these over using these buttons here in just a moment. Click. This may take a while because someone else is also grabbing contracts. And feel free to fast forward if you would like.
first balloon is full. We're going to close that one. And we're going to open... Sorry, we have to close contracts first. We're going to open up our next balloon. And we're going to do the same thing. You may notice that they're respawning a lot slower than they used to as well. Um, once you hit level 3, they spawn quite slowly for you. And level 4, they hardly spawn at all. They're not really worth it at that point. Level 1 is awesome because you can... They, they just spawn almost instantaneously, and you can do, you know, 20 or 30 runs before you finally decide that you're bored and you want to move your way up and start buying skills, so... Uh, take advantage of your low level because it gets much harder as you level up. Almost done. Alright, two out of three balloons. We've got one left and then we will be good to take off. Remember, open cargo first, then open contracts. Ah, uh, see, another player snatching these up. Now it's going to get much harder. But they haven't watched my tutorials, so... Haha! <laughs> I'm going to grab these quicker than they do. Click Enter. That's the way you get these things. Oh, they caught on. Alright, in the interest of time, I'm not going to fill up this last balloon all the way. I'll let the legitimate players make some money. But the point is here. We, we've got three mostly full ships. We got my ship with the weapons. So what you're going to do, and again, this is the most important part, is you're going to undock your follower ships first. Okay? So... There's now a new option available called Undock the Ship Under Control of the Navigation System, or B. So we're going to undock the first one. Now we're going to undock the second one. Then we undock our personal ship last, but we don't do it under the navigation system. We can do it as ourselves. Although you can do it under navigation and send them all there automatically but then you'll have to fly over to that base in order to grab them and send them home. So it's just easier if you just undock yourself on the last one. There's my two ships. They're already doing their own thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of my ships up here in the control. I'm going to tell it to land up at hearth. Now I'm going to tell my other ship to land up at hearth as well. And last but not least, where am I right here? I'm going to tell myself to land up at Hearth. Now I've got a nice little three balloon convoy going. It's hard to tell which of these balloons is mine because they're kind of all over the place. But this one in the distance, eh, that one's not mine. Uh, possibly these. Anyway, mine are somewhere around here. They're not far. They're usually within a mile. As you can see, I'm playing at night. It is much darker and harder to see, so I apologize for that in advance. Um, but while we're flying, I'll give you a little bit more tutorial on some other things you can do. So, if you want to friend a player, you can simply click on their balloon. Oh, see? Here's one of my balloons. <laughs> there it is. So we're going to click on... Eh, why not? This guy. This guy's name is Black Diver. I can friend him by clicking on add as a friend or I can become his enemy which means my ship will fire on him if I have the automatic fire on ships enabled. I would strongly recommend against this though because if you're in a safety area or in a no, no fire zone the in-game ships will come and absolutely destroy you. 
So last but not least is ask in the chat where you mention their name and then you type something after that. It's not a whisper system, so be careful how you use it because all the players in the game will see what you're saying. As of this tutorial, there is no whisper in game and there's no guild chat, something that they've stated that they plan to implement soon. That's our relations panel. We can close that by clicking on our own ship. Another thing is dragon wings. Now you cannot fly dragon wings by default because they're considered a strekalot or a fighter as we call it. To change that you can learn strekalot piloting level one. Might as well do that. It's only two gold. It's going to take 20 minutes. Once I have learned that skill I can use my dragon wings which to, to give you an example of what that is, um, some other games have things called drones where you can fly a drone away from your character to look around corners or to visit places without actually going there. It's, it's a similar idea. So Dragon Wings is basically just a glider that launches from your ship and you can glide wherever you want to go. This is one of the biggest mistakes that new players make is they use their Dragon Wings and they get lost in the middle of nowhere and you have to pay gold to get back to the nearest settlement. So be very careful how you use dragon wings because when your ship is abandoned it will very 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 slowly float off into the sky. Unless of course you took my advice and put a navigation system on it. So be cautious about dragon wings and also don't use your dragon wings when your ship is very high up because just like in real life the air gets thinner up there and it's very hard to glide upward. All right, we're coming in for a landing now. Our other two balloons are somewhere around here. Let's see. There's one of them. The other one is probably this guy right. Nope. I don't know where my other one is, but he's around. He's landing somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's right here. And yeah, if you're thinking, boy, they should have some sort of indicator that shows which ships are yours, I completely agree with you. Maybe like a green circle or something. Alright, so down I go. There's one of my ships, my other one's coming in. And when we land, this time I won't have my skill list open so you can see the effects that it has on our um, reputation and gold. So right now I'm at 20,326 gold. And no, you won't be starting with that much gold. And uh, yes, gold is shared between accounts, so, or between characters rather. So I have another character, which is my primary. That's why I have all this gold, because it carries over to my new characters. They may change that in the future, they may not. Okay, reputation in the Empire plus 37. You see I have 20,358 gold now. Here comes my other two ships to dock. Another one has landed. Our half full balloon gives us a plus eight. I have 20,366 gold now. And once my last balloon lands, here he is right here. I'm going to get even more reputation and even more gold. Here we go. All right, he has landed. I have 33 more reputation, 20,398 gold. Had I filled all those balloons, I would have gained about 50 gold. And by the way, a settlement costs 100 gold. So two full cargo runs would get you enough to build your own settlement. This is a great way to make money starting out. Uh, it's the way I recommend to all new players. Even, re even players who have other characters tend to do cargo contracts until level 3 just because it's easy gold and it's a lot quicker than doing actual trading. That is it for gold making part 2 and I will see you for our next tutorial. Not sure what it's going to be about but we'll see. Alright guys, thank you very much and I hope that you learned quite a bit.